Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Black Town TV presents Beat in the Talk. Of course, I am your girl, Simone Jackson. I am the host, of course, and uh, we are kicking to continue to kick off our Women's Month uh, with our next guest for today. She <clears throat> is a founder of uh, an entertainment premiere video streaming site for for Black Web Series. It's called, uh, I do believe it's called uh, Claret Entertainment. I do believe, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, it's a media that promotes diversity through a number of initiatives just to promote and to get more unique voices out there. Uh, I'd like you, like you guys to introduce Miss Victoria Coker. Hello, Victoria. Hi. How are we doing this morning? All right. So definitely oh. I'm going to correct you just a little. It's colored media. I know it's spelled weird. I thought I was clever when I came up with the name. But I have to differentiate differentiate it. So it's oh, no, media. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I, 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 I I do like the color of I do like the uh, spelling of it though. It is clever. I I really do. It is pretty clever. So it definitely got me. I was like, wait, is it red or is it colored? So so thank you for correcting me. But how are you doing today? I'm all right in yourself. I am doing good. We are glad to have you on the show with us, of course. We are excited that you, you know, we know you're extremely busy doing a lot of different things. Not only are you doing, you know, colored entertainment media, you also do Black Web Festival as, as, as well, which kicks off my first question of today. Um, how was the Black Web Festival created? Um, yeah, so I actually went to an event called Blogalicious uh, two years ago for colored content, which is a video streaming platform um, specifically. And I spoke with people, people loved it, everyone who was there. And this is hundreds of people, mostly women of color. And they were like, that's such a great idea. We need something like this. And um, they were like, why don't we know about it? And I realized there, I've, I was doing it for like over a year and I wasn't, I was promoting in New York, but I wasn't promoting anywhere else. Um, and this was in Atlanta. So I was like, I need to do events in other places um, when I left the festival. So after leaving the festival, I said, I'm gonna have an event next year. That was let, let's say November. And I said, I'm having this event in April because it's the perfect time. Um, no one else is doing anything. Right. And I just went full speed ahead, not knowing. I thought it was gonna be small, but then I started doing stuff and it became bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, that's how Black Web Fest was um, started, and I just had the festival last year. People loved it, and I was like, okay, of course I'm doing it again this year. And that's good that, you know, that you, you thought you were going to start small, but then it continued to grow and grow and grow. That should, that shows that there was, not only there was a demand for it, but it was, it, it was, a, you know, there's, there's um, content there that, you know, they can gravitate to. So I, I'm, I'm glad to see Black Web Festival was really successful for you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how important is to bring, you know, um, Black-led content, you know, i.e. movies, web series, short films, why is it so important to continue to bring it to the forefront as it is, you know, as we continue to do so now? Yeah, I mean, it's so important. I mean, it's so many different reasons why it's important. I think the first thing is that media is is the teacher, is, is, is like one of our first teachers you know, if you're younger, your parents may plop you in front of TV and you watch it. Um, and I remember it was years ago, um, obviously before I was born, probably me before you were born, they had did the study with the, the black kids with the dolls um, and the kids gravitated more to the white dolls or, or something like that. Yeah. And that just shows that representation is important. You need <laughs> representation. You need to see people who look like you. Um, everyone needs that. And so media, because it's such, so important and it shapes so many pieces of our lives, we need to have diversity in media because if people don't see themselves, then they won't dream to be, oh, I can be on TV. Or they may say, you know what, I'm not good enough, so let me change myself to fit into some stereotype, not knowing that they're good enough just the way they are. So it's important that we have different stories, not mm -hmm. one story told. Then also, um, what was the, the, the movie that... Um, that Ava, Ava DuVernay um, told the story of 113th and how they had that movie. What is the movie called? Um, they... What was that? Um, yeah. It was they... Oh, what was it? I, I think I know exactly what you're talking yeah, where about. 
but yeah, they made black people look like savages. So it already put in media that black people are these savages. There are these animals. Mm-hmm. And so that also affects how not just we see ourselves, but other races and cultures see ourselves. Yes. I know that people say, um, I, I personally know this with someone who I actually work with and um, they're, you know, Caucasian. And they said, you know, when I do see some black people, I'm afraid to walk down the street. And I'm like, why is that? And they're like, I don't know why. I just feel that way. And I'm like, but you don't feel afraid of me. And the person was like, because I know you. And I'm like, those people are just like me. And so it's important that we have positive black role models, regardless, um, for everyone to see, not just for ourselves. So it's important that we tell different stories. We don't just tell stories that are biased or about drug dealers or about gay violence or about nonsense. Um, Tell stories where we're doctors and lawyers. Tell stories where we're astronauts and like hidden figures or work at a NASA. So we need to have full stories to show people that we're human because we are. It's just, yes. pigment. it's just pigment. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I, I agree with that. And I also agree with, I've also heard, you know, statements like, you know, I am afraid to walk down the street if, you know, if black people are around and I'm just thinking, you know, that's just not, you know, and it is because of how, we are betrayed in media and movies and stuff like that. But people need to realize it's it, it, it's not be player black people, but anybody can be that way. Anybody, honestly. But it's just portrayed more for black people. And you're right. We do need to be shown in more positive, more, uh, you know, definitely, definitely into more positive light. I definitely agree with that. Definitely. So um, how did color, uh, Colored Entertainment, how did that came to be? Yeah, colored media, <laughs> but yeah, so how did colored media come to be? So actually in 20, I guess it was 14, um, for, for years, I guess since I graduated from college, I wanted to work at Viacom. And I had an interview twice for BET um, to work there. And I didn't get the job the first time because I, I don't remember. But the second time was because they were trying to do a, a permalance, which is like permanent freelance. Mm-hmm. They were like, you might only work for a month here and then not have a job, but if you want to take the risk, you can. And I was kind of like, uh, I'm not sure. Um, and I already had a part-time job. So they were like, well, you know, you should stay at your part-time job pretty much. Yeah. You might not have a job in a month. Oh. And I was like, okay, so I'm not getting hired for a company that I was like, wanted to work for for years. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to create opportunity for myself. So right. that was... I already had this idea months ahead because I was looking for a job in entertainment. I wanted to really work in entertainment. So Mm -hmm. I was looking for a job months ago and I had saw a site and it was a marketing site for black web series and and digital content. But I thought it was exactly what color content was. So I told the person, oh, well, what you have is needed. And the person was like, that's not what it is. I just do marketing for these companies. And I was like, oh, well, you should. And the person was like, I'll think about it. And the person never did it, but it was my idea. So <laughs> when I finally didn't get the job, it was like, all right, this is the nail in the coffin. I'm going to do this idea that I came up with. Um, I feel it's needed. I know it's needed. And um, yeah, that was it. You took a risk and you and it paid off. Yeah. Okay. It's great. I like that. I like that you just, you know, where you're like, you know what? It need, there needs to be something like this. And I'm going to go out there and create. Yeah, some people really do need to create their own opportunities because you never know what could happen. I mean, it, it just, yeah, the success with that you're having, I mean, you, you took that risk and then, like I said, it's paying off. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. As I said before in the beginning of our show, it is Women's Month. So uh, can you tell us who are the women who are inspiring you and who have, are continuing to inspire you? Um, yeah, I think, the person who inspired me the most is my mother because she allowed me to be who I am. Um, yeah, I think when I look at it, you know, when you're younger, you look at all these other people, you look at models and people on TV. And I, I think me being who I am naturally, she allowed it where I know a lot of parents um, say, you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer when you grow up, or you're going to do this and you have to go to college. My mother never forced me to say I'm going to go to college, but I chose to go to college. Mm-hmm. Um, everything that I wanted to do, if it was art, if it was music, um, she always encouraged me. So it made me believe that regardless what anyone else said, I could do anything I wanted. And having that 
um, unwavering belief in me, allowed me to have unwavering belief, um, sometimes unrealistic belief in myself. Um, so, um, yeah, my mother, of course. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah you, when it comes to inspirations, you can't get any better than mothers, honestly. They, it, I'm glad that, you know, she allowed you to flourish with whatever you were doing and, and, and support you despite whatever you were doing. So that's, you know, it's, it's good. That's really good. So uh, where does Colored Media and, and Black uh, Web, Web Festival hope to go in the future? Um, yeah, definitely bigger for the festival. Like, I just see the festival being like Afropunk meets South by Southwest. So whatever that means, it's a web fest. And even though film and media, like um, visual media and visual, um, yeah, visual media, um, play such a big visual art, I guess. Mm -hmm. Play such a big part in the festival. It's web. Anything that's on the web can be incorporated in the festival. So just more stuff about digital content. More stuff about web. So this year we're we're talking about stuff about podcasts. Um, in my mind, next year we could be talking about cryptocurrency. I don't know, but I just know that because the the web is growing and yeah. what's happening online is growing. Everything mm -hmm. under the sun could be incorporated in Black Web Fest because education is needed like sometimes yes. a lot of people of color black people um just speaking from my experience some people i know like they'll have great ideas um but they won't have the the, um, the resources to mm -hmm. actually connect the dots and to make it happen um and i want to like for me the festival even though it's a way to promote um content and, and discovery it's education too so a lot of people last year we talked about um, AR, VR, people didn't know, or IoT, people didn't know that they had IoT devices because they used, um, they used, a, you know, kind of an iPhone or um, Amazon Alexa. People right. didn't know that was IoT. So I want people to recognize all the resources that they have available to them online so they can create and monetize what they're doing. Mm. Um, so that's for the festival. I um, mean, color media, just Oh, there's so many things happening. So working on this new thing called Brandon and Brandon is actually a platform to connect influencers with, um, with brands because a lot of black people or a lot of people of color, cause it's, it's all for people of color, actually. Um, a lot of people of color, they are influencers. They're on social media. They, you know, they have, uh, they have a following, but they're not monetizing or they don't know how to monetize it. Um, or they have a web series and they're not monetizing it. They don't know how to get a sponsor. They don't know how to work with brands. So I want to kind of bridge the gap there and make it really easy for them, kind of like a PayPal system. So hopefully Brandon is up before the festival so I can launch it there officially. Um, but people can definitely sign up at brandon.com. And I spelled it unique, even though I, I know better this time. But <laughs> a n d i i n.com so it's kind of close and people can find it all across social media um but so yeah that's another piece to the puzzle and it, it's just so important everything i'm doing kind of is like to empower my community because i think it's just important and that's not just black people it's people of color um right of course so, yeah mm -hmm. of course and i definitely hope the black town tv family definitely checks out uh that uh brand and and and, and if they're you know don't know how to, you know, as you say, connect with sponsors or brands, hopefully they will check that out, get the tools and, and the resources they need to do that. So, and it, it's good that you are are, are helping and, and just just wanting to give back to your community. That's exactly what I want to do. I just wanted to help and, and, and give back to the communities. Um, I would hope to one day start, you know, a charity for, you know, disabilities, especially, you know, people of color with disabilities. I know there's not a lot for there for them. So I, uh, I, I'm very inspired by what you're doing because that's exactly what I'm hoping to do when I become, you know, as successful is, is, is kind of do what you're doing because I think it's important for sure. So um, with success like Girls Trip and Hidden Figures and of course Black Panther, do you feel Hollywood will finally turn over a new leaf and embrace diversity? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, that. No. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. It's about money, right? So, black, everything you have to, it's like 
ebbs and keep on going to the box office and we keep creating content that everyone loves, then definitely they're going to fall in line because people are continuing to do it. But they're not going to take a chance on people. You know, um, a lot of how financing works, what I've learned is investors invest in pattern matching. So if they see someone like um, a Ava DuVernay or a Issa Rae or um, the young Ryan who created um, Black Panther, mm -hmm. they will invest in them. They'll invest in the next person who was at Sundance and they're Black. They will invest in a, another um, Get Out. They'll invest in those people that already have a proven track record. But the people who, who, who are potential, who have potential, who, have, who don't have the money will still find it hard because it's still there's so many places to fit these people. Um, and they look for people who already have a proven track record to invest in. So they'll look for the next hit because they already saw Black Panther was a hit. So they'll look for another Black Panther, but they're not looking for something new and they're not experimenting. Um, and people are still discriminating too. So it makes it hard. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think at this time we need to um, actually take advantage while it lasts. Mm -hmm. because it won't be forever because you know like there's just ebbs and flows of everything there's you know there's going to be a time where there's a whole bunch of shows and movies just like one type of movie because it did so well like mm -hmm. um and then like there was a whole bunch of in the 80s early 90s buddy cop movies right because there's right. beverly hills did good so beverly hills cop did good let's find another let's do leave the weapon oh leave the weapon did good let's do another black and white guy in the movie together you know what i mean Right, um, right. so that's how it goes um, and until and if the box office fails then they're going to say oh that doesn't really work or people are tired of it let's go to the next thing um, right. so we just need to take advantage and really invest in ourselves and continue building and if we don't then we won't have the opportunities yeah no I agree with you and to kind of play off of that a little bit and uh, into going on to the next question. Um, do you feel that the narrative is, is changing? And when I mean narrative, do you feel like, you know, as we said before, do we, are we seeing a different representation of how um, people of color and women are being represented on screen instead of, you know, black people and people of color being, you know, gangsters, you see, of course, hidden figures. And, and um, we've, we've seen, um, the room, uh, the Denzel Washington movie, I cannot, it's in my mind, it's in my mind, it's called, uh, oh, it was right there in my mind, I know it's called, like, the Roman, the Roman something, but do you feel like the narrative is finally changing for people of color and women? Um, I think definitely women, because women are all races are changing it, right, and that's someone's mm -hmm. wife, and that's someone's sister, so definitely they're working to change Hollywood, they're taking people out of, um, taking people out of power, um so yeah for women the narrative is changing and women are making this happen um and it's so it's so many women right women are so big where we're um people of color black people i don't i mean i i think so definitely i think the stories are changing mm -hmm. we're creating more stories and different stories and and people are seeing what what works right they're seeing black panther like oh black panther did good i'm gonna do more of those type of films let's put black lightning out let's put you know what i mean let's put this show out so definitely the story has changed but is it is it enough or um you know and then also that takes because it's media that's gonna to be infused into reality it's gonna take so long to change people's uh mindset you know it might be a next generation who might benefit from us from it where this generation people who see it um, their perception will still remain. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think I agree with that. Um, I think, especially with women, I think we are finally taking control of our own narrative and our own stories, and we're finally, you know, stop being just the girlfriend or just the, just the mom. We are, we're being more, and, and like you said, for, for you know, people of color, it, it is slowly but surely changing. I we definitely still got a long, long, long way to go, but we we're making strides, and I think that's it's 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 important to recognize process and, and progress as we go along. It, it, hopefully, you know, within the next few years, it'll feel, fully be changed, but you know, we, we still got to continue to support with that. So, it it's definitely important to to continue to do. Um, but can you explain why a festival like a Black Web Festival is so important to have? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's so important, one, to build community. We're online, it's social media. A lot of people forget the social part of social media. Um, so it's important that we build the way we build community is in person. People will meet you online and never trust you. And then if someone met you in person, they'll trust you way more, right? So it's important that we continue to have places, communal places where we feel safe to communicate and meet in person to build relationships because relationships are what affect uh, your success. You know, the whole old adage, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, it rings true and it's always true. Some doors have opened for me because I know people, because I met people, because I did other things for other people without asking for anything. So it's important that we continue to build those relationships because those relationships are the things that will carry us through and help us build success. You look at a Black Panther and Michael B. Jordan was in, you know, all of the director's movies, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And he's built, built a relationship with him. And he worked mm -hmm. on the film, the first film, Fruitville Station, um, for him for for a low price, you know, for a low price for anyone else. And then he did Rocky together. And now they did Black Panther, and now they're working on something else. Like those are the relationships you build, and that's why festivals and something like Black Web Fest is, which is geared more towards millennials and a younger generation who's online and doing digital content and creating all this digital stuff, is important. It's important that we continue to have these communities and build mm -hmm. and i do and i do agree with that you know these it's 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 just really important to continue to build with you know the communities i'm loving the relationship between ryan coogler and, and michael b jordan it's just it's just gold it, to me it won't i won't be surprised if one day they both just get an oscar for working on a movie together because they just they know they just they just have that golden touch and they just and um yeah i'm really glad a festival like web web fest is is bringing communities together because it's important and with bringing communities together we can also bring people who you know stay in the share passion and we can just share the same ideas and just you know create from there so it, it it's great so i definitely i definitely appreciate you know black web festival and and, and the message it has so that's for sure um, what's the best advice you can give to a young, inspiring filmmaker or web creator? Um, I think the best advice is do research and make your own opportunities. Just exactly what I'm living, right? Um, do research to find what's available to you. There's so many things. I live in New York, so there's a lot of accessibility, but there's accessibility mm. everywhere. There's meetups in different states, right? People live in, especially if you live in the United States, there's meetups all over. So you can build a community or have a community. If not, you can do stuff digitally um, and then meet up at festivals once a year, you know, and build those relationships. Find resources. Does, does your, um, does where you live actually have resources for free podcasting, free websites, free um, filmmaking, or at a low cost? Because a lot of people are like, I can't afford to do stuff when there is options all over to mm -hmm. actually just start, right? You need to just start because people have ideas and they don't start. So do research. If you do research, you'll be able to find the answers um, to do it on a shoestring budget and find mm -hmm. that will help you do it on that budget. Um, and that possibly believe in what you're doing um, because there's so many people who support me, who believe in what I'm doing because I'm doing it for them or with them in mind. Um, and what was the other piece I just thought of? Like, oh, and just and and um, just do it yourself if you can't find the opportunity. I know so many media makers and web series creators who are just doing it for themselves. If you look at someone like Issa Rae, she did a web series first, guys. She knew people, obviously. But yeah, she, she did. did a web series first, and people loved the web series. The web series went to ABFF, ABFF um, saw it, and then H, I mean HBO saw it at ABFF. And now she's on HBO and now she's making movies and now she's doing all these things and she's hot out there, you know? Yeah. And because she took the initiative to do herself and people think out the gate, like when I first started stuff, it was like, not great. And this is not my first effort at trying to do a company, but sometimes you have to go through the growing pains. Don't be afraid to start it and, not, and, and be like, oh, I'm not perfect. It's like nothing's ever perfect. Nothing in life human beings are imperfect. We're imperfect creatures. Like one 
like one eye is a little bit bigger than the other. We, it might right. look right, but everything's imperfect. So don't work, wait for perfection. Just do it. Say it louder for the people in the back. I totally agree with that. 100%. I do. So make sure you buy talent TV. Uh, you make sure you just take the initiative. You do research and you have support and you will be, be successful. So it's, it's, that's the winning formula. It's been proven. So, um, but can you tell our audience why they should check out black web festival? And if they want to participate, how can they? Okay. So definitely why one community, right? So you're supporting your community, right? Everyone wants to have, everyone wants to say like, oh, I support every, I root for everything black. Like that's how you root by putting your dollars behind it. People went to Black Panther three times to put their money behind it. Like yeah. you have to put your money behind stuff you really believe in if you believe in it. If not, then it'll just fall to the wayside because people need to have livelihoods, just like people need to have livelihoods to go to work every day. But if you want cool things and things to happen and things to change, then you have to put um money behind it so so those are two reasons three you get to discover other content you get to discover film short films web series different things that people are creating um mm. and these are other filmmakers you know these are people who are putting the work and effort in so you get to watch content that you may have never seen and then see people like yourself because representation is important so you get to see that um and four for the experience like it's an experience like the way I'm crafting it is panels, and then it's also screenings, but then also wine tasting. Like, last year, I just had wine, and people were like, wow, the wine tasting was so nice. And I was like, oh, okay, we're going to do that again this year, <laughs> um, because the wine owner was willing to sponsor last year and come in and tell everybody about all the wines. And this is a Black-owned wine shop in Harlem. So, really, you know, it's just all about community people are yeah it's, it's just so dope and people are supporting each other and and so in that like just the community aspect of what we're doing um i think people should come out to the festival i definitely agree i feel like if you are wanting to check it out i feel like you should go and definitely participate not just for the wine um but definitely go and and um build and and, and check out the communities and just check out you know different different contents from, uh, from ideas from people just like you and, and who, who, who are trying to make it just like you. So yeah, I definitely, um, Black Talent TV family, definitely check out the Black Web Festival and definitely participate if you can. It seems like it'd be not like a great time to, you know, but it just seems like it'd be a great opportunity and just a great learning, ex learning experience as well. So Victoria, I truly, truly appreciate you coming down and sitting with us and talking with me and talking about the Black Web Festival and talking about um, colored media. I really do appreciate that. Oh, thank you for having me, Simone. Absolutely and absolutely. And yeah, of course, here at Blacktown TV, we are happy to, to continue, you know, our partnership with you. So we're excited to see which, you know, what different contests come out of Black Web Festival this year. So we're really excited. Boop, boop. <laughs> she said, whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right, Black Talent TV family, make sure again, if you want to participate in the Black Web Festival, please go out and check out their website and, 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 and participate if you can. If you are in the New York area, please go and, 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 and check out Black Web Festival. And of course, the wine, it sounds pretty good. Um, uh, also, um, Black Talent TV family, we just want to thank Victoria for, for talking with us and especially being part of our Women's Month segment. Um, it, it, it is great. So we do appreciate her, you know, speaking with us today. Um, we do appreciate the thoughts, Miss Victoria. And we know as a busy woman you are, so we definitely appreciate you stopping by. Aw. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Not a problem. All right, Black Talent TV family, I am your host. Remember, if you are uh, wanting to, you know, advertise or come down and, and, and speak with us, make sure you check it out. As Check us out at info at blacktalentv.com. Uh, make sure you check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're, we're, we're everywhere. So uh, once again, Black Talent TV family, my name is Simone Jackson. We will be talking to you guys soon. Victoria, thanks again, everyone. Bye.